Good morning. I am delighted to join you here in Enugu to be part of this first in your series of Nza TEDx. Nza. Divergent thinking. That's something that I love doing. I believe in the fact that we must be creative. That creativity is the basis for progress in any society. And that to the extent that we are created as unique individuals with our beliefs, with our philosophies, with our convictions, that every time we find ourselves together, there is a lot to be said for what is possible. The limits of possibility is determined by the willingness of every one of us to throw out ideas around issues that matter to us. I have never been one to be circumspect about throwing out ideas. I believe that ideas are key to the development of a people. And I don't believe that any idea is weird or crazy. I actually believe in all ideas. Ideas are ideas. <laughs> they can work and they may not work, but they must be given the freedom to be seen, to be discussed, to be argued. <laughs> Talking about argument, that is the fundamental basis of creativity. You know, when my husband, Pastor Chine Duezekwesli, said something, it was at that time that I felt I could marry this man if he asked me. He said, deviation is a function of progress. And I loved it. Deviation. The fact that J.F. Kennedy had once said that conformity is the jailer of freedom. And the instrument that retards fruit means that every time I see people who are willing to be the odd ball in an environment that wants everyone to sound the same, think the same, and agree the same, I love those kinds of people. So I must love those kinds of people. From when I was young, I never had any difficulty having my voice. My voice was uniquely mine. It didn't actually matter at the time that I was young that the rest of my playmates had a different idea about something. And I looked at that same thing and I thought, this idea is this one is strange, but this is, this is red. And everybody sort of says, no, it's not red, but it's black. And I said, no, but it's red. And they said, we all say it is black. You should agree it is black. No. It should not be that because we all say it is black, the person who says it is red is considered to not be correct. This has even taken more prominence in my life 
as I've grown through the years. I remember going to secondary school and we were that class of secondary school children of that era that woke up one morning and military captains had been sent to our secondary school. They said we were not well behaved nationally. And so we needed to be disciplined by the military. And so every school had a military person. And our own military person was a man called Captain Obembe. And he loved to use his whip. Whether you did anything or you didn't do anything wrong, for as long as you passed by him, he would use his kaboko on you. And people got used to taking the koboko. My schoolmates would be given the koboko and they would say, Sir, I didn't think it was right. So one day I decided to diverge. He came my friend, my classmate. I walked up to Captain Obimbe and said, next time you kill somebody in this school, I will show you that you don't have power to do that. I was in secondary school. My schoolmates said, Kate, Kate. I said, leave me alone. He is not supposed to kill people when they have not done anything wrong. And I said to him, Captain Obembe, if you kill people when they have not done anything wrong, and kill people when they have done something wrong, you're confusing everybody. My schoolmates always looked at me like, She's crazy. Divergent thinking can sometimes appear crazy. That sense that we must not all conform, otherwise would be a society in trouble, happened so many times in the course of my life. I was a professional when the military in 1993 decided to annul an election that was won, free and fair election. And we were all professionals in Lagos at that time, people like Patu Tommy and Atedo Peter Said and the rest of them, Maureen Babalola, Ayo Igodaro, Aswe Igodalo, and we were professionals doing well with our respective professional work. A lot of the people, unlike in my own case, I was already very much into these issues of being active on matters of good governance. I was at that time already part of Transparency International as one of the co-founders. And the elections were annulled. And part of Tommy and the rest of them, the, we, the, that conversation led to that the conversation that professionals shouldn't be indifferent to what was happening in governance led to the establishment of what was then known as consent professionals. I became a part of consent professionals, ultimately became the first and only woman that led it. And we always came up against the military. We would go out on the street as professionals to do an agitation that they needed to restore the mandate of Chief MKO Abiola and the military tankers. Oh, you guys think you know SARS? In our own days, they were called kill and go. They would line up and say, you're not going anywhere. One of the days they said we were not going to do a match to the Western House on Broad Street. And the, our leader at that time, seeing how 
very dangerous they looked with their tankers all over the place they stopped us right where we were starting at Methodist Church Onibungo, and said we weren't moving at all and he was saying let's disperse and I said we cannot disperse why should we disperse we should disperse because they said so and he said to me I am not afraid to say I'm a coward let's disperse and I said we will not disperse is it possible that I can be in front and hold the banner and he said okay I took the banner went in front and I said let's go and all that the military tankers could do was offer us protection because they began to drive behind us we walked all the way to our destination and did what we needed to do there's no divergent thinking without divergent voices we must speak up when something is wrong with our society you cannot sit and be comfortable with a society that's dying just because you want to melt into the crowd and be accepted I have never cared to be accepted what has bothered me is this sense that my comfort may mean too much to me that I actually become complicit in agreeing with what is wrong as being what is right my journey carried me to government at some point and the reason I went to government was that I had been part of a campaign from my university as staff of Professor Jeffrey Sachs at Harvard looking at debt sustainability issues concerning the new democracy Nigeria and then began to say Nigeria is actually not wealthy to the US government it was the presidency of Clinton a country that was spending seven times its debt service budget its health budget on debt service eight times its budget on education for debt service could not be considered poor and so we did this analysis and at the end of the day the executive branch was not presidency was was convinced that Nigeria needed some support with its debt but the Treasury as well as Congress said you're talking about a country that is legendary for poor management of its resources if we did anything for Nigeria it would amount to moral hazard and that ended any possibility so I had to come home to try to show that the new Nigeria was beginning was going to spend its own resources better and that if we could if we could pick evidence of that we could then use it to support a new conversation for debt reduction for Nigeria that brought me home that brought me home to do what you know as the due process the reform of the public procurement system when I got into government they took one look at me and they would say American wonder she thinks it will work here why would it work here the politicians were angry that I came back at all one of the days I was invited to the National Assembly the chairman took one look at me after I made a submission and said madam due process when are you going back to Harvard and I said to him I will not be going back very quickly even though I knew that I wanted to go back very quickly because I was only to be here for about 18 months but to make sure that that end gentleman understood that my path diverges I had to give him that response that work on the due process was a tough work to do in the midst of politicians who had become used to the idea that being in public office is the equivalence of making wealth an idea that diverges from what I believe in 
and I, we had to fight the fight of getting improvement in the value for money on public contracts. You know, it was such a difficult fight that even my driver used to be excommunicated by his fellow drivers for driving that wicked woman that does not allow people to get money. It didn't bother me. It was okay to just be me. What am I saying in all of this? What I'm saying in all of this is that I am tired of a society where we're not fed up with just all being the same kind of people who see no evil, no, no evil, do no evil. I'm tired of us being in a society where we handed our nation over to the kind of injustice that has led to 87 million of our people being called extremely poor and overtaking a country that's seven times our population in having such absolute number of extremely poor people. I'm tired of a missing middle class that sees success as being that they went on holiday abroad and that their children are in some fancy school or hospital. I'm tired of us thinking that we've got all the years to fix problems that should have been fixed, fixed long ago. That's why it is okay for your ideas in this place to diverge. You know, Robert Frost said, I came to a road. Where the paths diverged. And I, I chose the one least traveled. And it made all the difference. I am looking to the Nigerian young people. The, the women who have been for so long excluded in the process of nation building. To just pick up the courage, the fearlessness. To speak back and say, I am tired of a failing country. Because, you know, at the end of the day, what is it that really matters? It's not going to be the fact that you came, you saw, you kept quiet, did not trouble anybody, was not insulted, had a good life. What would make all the difference is that because of another, you were willing to speak up. It is time to speak up again. You're going to have to speak up as we enter into a new possibility for our country. The same people who want that attitude of conformity have said to you that there are only two parties that can win elections. I dare to say to you that it is the most nonsensical thing ever spoken in a world that offers divergent thinking. Think and think divergently. Thank you.